We're live with you today. We are going to show you a really cool faux stain technique, which I know a lot of you have seen before, but we get asked about how to do this more than probably anything else that we do. And so I wanted to show you on this uh, cool project that I've got plans for. Uh, if you can see, this is actually a, a round from one of those giant spools, and I got it for free. And I've been dying to do this project, um, and I'm finally getting to it. Uh, so I'm going to show you some of the things I'm going to be using for the faux stain, but I'm also going to give you a sneak peek of what this project is actually going to be, because it's going to be amazing. Uh, see this right here? Can you guys see this? This is a hairpin table leg, and I got I ordered four of these, and I finally just got them, so I'm ready to do this project. I ordered them from hairpinlegs.com. Here's the box. Do you guys want to see? If you want some mid-century hairpin legs, really super cool, affordable place to go. Anyway. I'm going to show you the, the things that I have on hand to do my faux stain, and I'm using the same things that I always use. I typically use, uh, for when I want a true brown, um, chocolatey color for my stain project, I use a color called Mink, and it's by Benjamin Moore. Anytime you guys see paint that's already mixed up into a squeeze bottle, I've already mixed it with chalk paint, with BB Froze chalk paint powder. So I've already mixed it into chalk paint. So this already has the powder in it. And again, the color is mink, but seriously, you guys, you can use any color you want. And you, it doesn't even have to be the perfect brown. It can be red, it can be navy, it can be a lighter color, darker color, whatever color you want. You just wanna do this with something that has a visible grain to it. In the case of the, the spool that I'm doing, um, it has a natural wood grain to it already. But this will also work on something that's laminate that has kind of a faux grain. Um, but if it doesn't have a grain, you're not gonna create a grain. So, okay, so I've got my paint that's already mixed in. I have got a jar of water handy, and I'm actually going to be using two brush sizes today, this larger brush here and the smaller brush, because there's gonna be a lot of little grooves that I wanna try and get into that it's a little bit harder to do with a large brush. I have a foam tray. I almost always paint with a foam tray. Um, uh, it makes your paint so it's not contaminated. It's just a little bit cleaner to do it this way. And then I have a lint-free huck cloth. This is a surgical huck cloth. You guys, this is really important. Use a lint-free cloth. When you're doing this, you don't want to get lint in your paint. So uh, as long as you've got all of these things, and it's really not a lot, it's pretty simple, then you're ready to get going. And I'm going to have Cammie, who's doing my camera for me, I'm going to have her pan down, and I'm just going to get started painting. Okay, guys? Here we go. So I squeeze a little bit of paint onto my foam tray, and then I've already got my brush sitting in some water here. Let's see, I'll move it this way. And you want to wring most of the water out, or some of the water out, but you want to leave some of it in so that when you swirl it around in your paint, it's drippy. See how that's not very drippy? I'm going to add a little teeny bit more water. This is the other reason I like to use a uh, tray, a foam tray, is it allows me to kind of... Uh, be flexible with how much water I have so I can add more or less water the next pass if I find that I don't like the amount I'm using. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go all the way from one end to the other and I'm just going to go back and forth that easy you guys and then I'm just going to wipe it right after I've done a pass. So I'm going to load up my brush again and I start all the way at one end. Don't start in the middle because you don't want stop and start marks on your piece. Go all the way from one end to the other and I'm just going to do one slat at a time because paint, the paint will dry very quickly since it's chalk paint and I don't want it drying on my piece before I've had a chance to wipe it off. So can you see how gorgeous that grain is showing through? Now you really um, can only do this with uh, chalk paint, um, not with paint that doesn't have chalk paint powder in it uh, because it won't, it won't have the same effect and it won't have the same properties. But also, you guys, this is so much cleaner than using traditional stain, and I can adjust the color or the um, opacity as I go, whereas with traditional stain, you can't. And you also don't know how traditional stain will act with different species of wood. So can you demo one more time, a little bit slower so that I can okay. see it over here? Okay, so let's do this. We are doing Facebook Live and Instagram Live. So I'm trying to get them on both cameras for everyone. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna squeeze a little bit more paint on. Get a little bit more water. Looks like I won't really be needing my small brush a whole lot. Maybe for these other smaller parts I will. 
If I find that it looks like I've got, um, it's too thin or I can see too much or, um, you know, it's not as dark as I want, I can just do another pass and use a little bit less water. Uh, that's the nice thing about not adding water directly to your paint, doing it on a, on a paint tray. And I am going to come back after I've done the whole top and I'm going to kind of get these areas in here. Guys, this is so much easier than traditional stain. Oh my gosh, I will never use traditional stain again. So you can tell here I had a little bit less water in my paint than I had here. So if I want to adjust this to be more like this, I'll just do another pass over it. And it'll make it a little bit darker. You cannot screw this up, I'm telling you, it's awesome. Now it's a little bit darker and matches the color a little bit better. I love that. I also think sometimes the different tones add character. Oh, I agree. To the different parts. I did this on a bench the other day, and after I did the whole faux stain, I didn't wax it yet. So after I did this part and before I waxed it, I took a, um, my sander to it, and it further brought out some of this grain. Looked really super cool. I may even do that with this top. I haven't decided yet. But you can see how this literally takes a couple of minutes to do. And you just load up, reload your brush as needed. Let me add a little bit more here. I'm literally just painting right here on my dining room or my kitchen table. I just put a, a drop cloth down. Um, I gotta paint inside because it's kind of cold outside. But I don't have any fumes at all. No fumes because I'm using a chalk paint instead of a traditional stain. Okay, so um, we're gonna pause for a minute and I'm gonna take a minute and I'm gonna go ahead and get in these grooves with my little brush and around here with my little brush. And I'm also gonna do the edges of the table. Uh, but we've kind of shown you the gist of the faux stain part. Um, stay tuned, we will be waxing it. Oh, hi. Uh, we will be waxing it later because once you have the look that you want, you do want to seal and protect it. And that waxing step is what makes this look really professional as opposed to just uh, paint on raw wood. So stay tuned while I finish up these little areas here. And we're going to have a pretty awesome table to show you guys in a little while. Okay, bye guys.